We're here at the London home of the artist Frank Bowling to interview him about his painting Kaita 2 that the Government Art Collection recently acquired. Dating from 1975, this large abstract work depicts a series of poured red, green and yellow lines running vertically down the canvas. Can you tell us a little bit more about the inspiration for this piece? Well, you know, the um, titling is really to do with um, my approach to the work. I don't start out with a specific idea, like trying to make a painting of a waterfall. What happens, as this title will, it does indicate, is that when the work is finished, I try to reconnect with what happened during my actual sort of making of the work. And Kaito being this very symbolic image that um, I first came across from the, the, the artist Donald Locke, telling me that my work, the poor paintings, resembled the, um, this image which was very much um, a kind of advertisement for Guyana, sort of like a tourist um, attraction. The Kaito Falls was this very um, central image that artists before me, Guyana born, tended to paint and um, Donald Locke, who is the father of um, Hugh Locke. Um, I met in 60, 1968 when I went to Guyana to make a film about the landscape in Guyana because I'm sick and tired of people asking me whether my work is connected to the landscape in Guyana and it was not. It was just um, um, the work was made in this very extemporaneous way and I started um, titling things from the Guyana um, place names simply because um, my friend Donald Block um, said my work seemed to relate to the landscape in Guyana. It wasn't something that I invented, it was something that I was told that I was doing. I read somewhere that you want to make the paint dance. Yes. Um, <laughs> can you say something a bit more about that? Well. Um, you know, again, it was an idea that was going around in the um, on the scene in New York. All the artists used to talk about dancing whilst one was working and to make the paint dance. You know, um, it was it was sort of um, artist talk more than um, any sort of real. Um, intent to, to you know to make the paint work in a certain kind of way although that we were all trying to do that there was talk about um wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to just throw the paint up and it would stay there you know as a sort of an image uh, you know you just throw the paint at the canvas which is something we all did as well mm -hmm. you know, just chuck the paint the canvas and watch it move and have devices whereby you know they, the, the activity was in, in the round, like the canvas was on the wall and then canvas on the floor. So when you chuck the paint towards the wall, the big moment came crashing down also on the floor. So um, there was all the talk about being able to make the paint just stand up when you threw it, that it would just, it would just appear um, um, on, the, on, on the flat surface as a kind of wonderful, colourful dance of just mixed colour. Right. So that's what was meant by making the paint dance, make it so that it actually caught the attention in terms of um, a kind of shimmer or movement in a, in a dance. Yes, literally, right. yes. So the kind of way it relates to sort of the abstract expressionist sort of action painting. That's well. right. That's, yeah. that's, where, that's where it sprang from, the yeah. whole idea. Yeah. And making the paint dance because one tended in working at one's work to dance around it, the, the, the work is, as well. So it all became part of just art talk, really, more than some specific thing that artists tried to do. But you, you were actually um, in New York, weren't you, in the 70s? I think yes, I was. I stayed in New York from 1966 to 75. And you met kind of quite a lot of I met, a, and then I met most of the artists uh, who were around at the time. You know, you Jackson have... Pollock had died by the time I got there, but uh, Newman and um, De Kooning and um, <coughs> various uh, um, 
Adolf Gottlieb and all these people were all still around. Yes. Did and you have a particular favourite amongst these, in terms of their work? Well, I, I tended to be, um, I tended to be um, much more interested in, in um, from Pollock, in Newman, because Newman seemed to be the, the, um, for the people of my generation, Newman seemed to be the, the, the most difficult artist to tackle. You know, you couldn't do much with Newman because the painting was so incredibly one there. You know, he painted these extremely very tough, very sort of um, severe um, surfaces. Are there some contemporary artist painters around whose work you do particularly admire? Do you do see well, perhaps? I continue to, to, to think of John Hoyland as a very good artist, an <laughs> um, English artist, um, and Larry Poons is an American artist, but um, I'm not terribly engaged with uh, my contemporaries. I find that most of the other artists that are still working and who are very um, um, engaging and pro probably very good too, you know, I'm not saying that you know, I think I do think that when John makes a, a, a work that's good, you know, you can it's so distinguished from anything else that's happening that um, you know you can see it. But um, I don't feel in competition with anybody. I think I'm trying to get my own stuff as remarkable, as beautiful as, as I can, and, uh, and that's my aim when I get up in the morning and I go to the studio. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find my own foundation. That's a fantastic way to end it. Thank you very, very much indeed for agreeing to talk to us today. Well, thank you for coming by.